The Obamas made separate pit stops in Maryland today, one of them in Prince George's. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Valone. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's time for celebration. Bowie State University's class of 2013 held its graduation this morning. First Lady Michelle Obama gave the commencement address. CTV Sonia Srivastava has our story from College Park. Well, about 600 Bowie State University students are graduating here today. And as you can see, this Comcast Center is absolutely packed. Uh, thousands of people are here, friends, family, faculty. And they had a very special commencement speaker, First Lady Michelle Obama. Many of the students here told me they couldn't even believe she was here. But she was very clear, concise, and she had a message for all of these graduating seniors. Graduation day is emotional. After all, family, friends, and teachers are just as vested. Whether it be the moral or financial support, without them, the day would be impossible. Today, a woman who's a source of inspiration to so many, First Lady Michelle Obama, brought some straight talk and had the crowd, well, speechless. This journey hasn't been easy. I know you've had plenty of moments of doubt and frustration and just plain exhaustion. But listen, you dug deep and you kept pushing forward to make it to this magnificent day. Education remained the centerpiece of Mrs. Obama's speech. She told graduates Bowie State was founded in 1865 to train black teachers. Now just think about this for a moment. For generations, in many parts of this country, it was illegal for black people to get an education. Slaves caught reading or writing could be beaten to within an inch of their lives. Anyone, black or white, who dared to teach them could be fined or thrown into jail. And yet, just two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, the school was founded not just to educate African Americans, but to teach them how to educate others. When it comes to getting an education, too many of our young people just can't be bothered. Today, instead of walking miles every day to school, they're sitting on couches for hours, playing video games, watching TV. What did it mean for you to see Mrs. Obama today? Beautiful, wonderful. I thought it was straight talk for children who needed to hear sort of keep it real language. I admire her, my daughter admires her, and I think we're going to remember this for the rest of our lives. It's just wonderful. I see you're getting some, you're getting teary eyed. Yes. <laughs> For many students, listening to Mrs. Obama's speech was a dream come true. For Audrey Lugmire, who was mentioned by name by the First Lady, it was another step toward beating the odds. After graduating from high school, Audrey worked full time for a year because she couldn't bear the thought of putting any more financial burdens on her father. I didn't know her family situation at home, but yet she was able to get through that rough family situation, turn it into something good. She went to school, she got degrees, her father helped pay for it, she turned into such a successful woman. This day is just an eye-opener for me to attain more greater achievements in life and also to be a greater person and also to um, tell other people to go to school. It was amazing. She's a really good speaker. And uh, I, I, I really felt the history and like, I don't know, it was very appropriate. There is little doubt these graduates will forget Mrs. Obama was their commencement speaker, but the hope is that her words will also resonate with them for years to come. Well, there is no doubt it was an emotional day for so many here. We saw people in tears. Uh, there were families that were just hugging each other when they were listening to Mrs. Obama. And this is certainly one of those lifetime moments that these families will never forget. At the Comcast Center, I'm Sonia Srivastava for CTV News. And Mrs. Obama was given an honorary doctorate degree in law by the university. President Obama also visited several Maryland sites today. He stopped by an elementary school, a community center, and a dredging company in Baltimore. Well, it is more than just a landmark for people who live in Fairmont Heights. Manico Bartholomew joins us with a look at why a neighborhood eyesore is on the verge of disappearing. 
We're on the border of Prince George's County in Washington, D.C., outside of a home that looks like it really should be demolished. But we have two women standing with us today to tell us why this home is very important and why everyone should help and donate to save the house. Thanks for joining us today. Nikita, thanks for joining us. Tell us why this home is so important and where you are in terms of raising money to save it. Yes. So this home was designed in 1907 by William Sidney Pittman. He was a very prominent black architect in this area and was married to Booker T. Washington's daughter for a period of time. Uh, we are currently in the fundraising stage for this house. We are looking at private um, donations as well as community gifts. Um, we're also looking for uh, county support. Tell us why your organization wants to help out. I'm a Prince George's County resident, but I'm also a member of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. And the, the commission's mission is to support the efforts around the state to uh, recognize, uh, preserve, and protect historic resources uh, significant to African Americans. A lot of people will look at this home and go, well, you know, it, it looks really bad. It's an eyesore. And then inside, there are some major concerns about the stability of the home and if we take a look on the other side you can see the home leaning to the side Correct. so why still you know save it we have furniture here it looks like people have been dumping things out yeah. and quite honestly it looks like nobody cares right well we care um, and we've had a structural engineer go into the home to do an evaluation of it uh, the house does look like it has leaned over the years it's not still moving from his assessment um, and people should care about this house because there are many african-american resources in the county that will suffer a similar fate if we don't start caring about our resources if we don't start trying to protect them even when they look like this and even when they can be restored then we're going to watch our history be demolished ladies thank you so much and again they have until May. 31st to raise at least $30,000 to save the home or the home will be demolished. In Prince George's County, Monique Bartholomew, CTV News. If you'd like to help save the Pittman House, you can call 301-965-0096. The County Department of Environmental Resources has given the nonprofits two extensions to allow them time to raise the funds needed to save the home. Shortly before airtime, officials called our newsroom to tell us the group has another 30-day extension until the end of June to come up with the money. Well, a fire that caused about $25,000 in damage to an apartment building may have been intentionally set. That's according to Prince George's County Fire Spokesman. The blaze started about 9 o'clock on Thursday evening in a second floor unit at 2710 Webster Street in Mount Rainier. The occupant was injured jumping to safety. Investigators believe the person may have also set the fire. A domestic dispute leads to a police barricade in Laurel. The incident began about 1240 this afternoon in an apartment in the 9600 block of Muirkirk Road. A male with a gun and a female were reportedly engaged in a dispute. The woman was able to escape, but the man remained inside for about three hours, refusing to come out. The barricade ended just before 430. No word on injuries or charges in the case. Well, last month's regional and state jobs report is in and Maryland is looking good. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the state's unemployment rate dropped to 6.5 percent in April. That's the lowest rate in more than four years. Preliminary data also shows an increase of nearly 35,000 new jobs since April 2012. The good news doesn't stop there. In a statement, Governor Martin O'Malley says the U.S. Chamber of Commerce ranks the state number one for entrepreneurship and innovation for the second year in a row.